Uh, Alaikum. Um, you mentioned about how the husband has a financial obligation to take care of the household, of course. What about when the female or the wife actually works and brings in some money as well? What Can you explain about what happens with the money she brings in in, yeah. in Islam? Is she re also responsible to yeah. take care of the household? And Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the very short question. I appreciate that. It's very specific. Um, the, the one lecture that I give, uh, many lectures that I give to people who are about other faiths, about women's rights, this point I make and the non-Muslim women are just jumping up in joy and cheering because of what I'm about to say. It was, it's very clear in Islam that the man is the maintainer of the household. And then two other things happen. The woman, the wife, if with after consultation, discussion, mutual discussion, uh, uh, then it has a job, every penny, are your sisters listening? I don't want any revolts after this, brothers, but listen, every penny that she earns is her property for her to keep. Got that? Can I get a tech beer? No, I'm just joking. And number two, number two, that if she, and this is after mutual consultation, so don't go out and get a job and say, Brother Altaf said get a job. No, if you have a job and you've discussed it. Number two, if she does choose to spend on the family, are you guys ready for this? Every penny of that is considered her charity upon the family. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a religion more merciful than that? Right? This is subhanAllah, that's all I want to say, but that's exactly the situation is that, that we, we, we don't have the understanding from the brothers. And we have to get to that stage. But you have the job, you, after consultation, you earn the money, and that permissible in a halal way, and then everything you spend, you're just raking in sadaqah, I mean, uh, hasanat, and good deeds, and good deeds, and good deeds. So please spend on them, especially like my wife should get in, inshallah. Uh, I'll talk to her later. <laughs> can, can I add to that? Yeah. Can you hear me? I think the other thing is for women to know this, because it's one thing for it to be, the case, but when we don't know it, we don't exercise what is our right, okay? And so we, we then hear a husband who says, oh baby, can you help me with this? No, baby, your, it's your responsibility to do this. And you don't know what your right is, so you can't demand your right, you can't even exercise your right when you don't know what your right is. I want to add one thing to this conversation also, and which is um, that in, in case of these kinds of situations, we are living, especially the, the Indopaks in the audience here, we're living in a, in a, in a culture uh, for a couple of generations, the, the women almost have no rights at home. And we're actually marrying them into uh, slavery to the in-laws. I'm just going to say it like it is. There are cases of psychological abuse that are far worse than any kind of physical abuse that are happening in you know, what was supposed to be originally a big happy family, the joint family system, but has now turned into literally psychological torture for these poor women who marry into these homes and their lives are just given into serving, you know, whoever. And they're actually forced, in many cases that I personally know of, they are forced to go to work and not a penny of what they earn they get to see themselves. And they are trapped in that situation because they feel that if they ask for anything, then they're going to, you know what they do? The in-laws, they call her parents and say, what kind of daughter did you raise? Right? And so they, she doesn't want to hear it from her own parents because she doesn't want her sorrow to extend to her original family. So she just bears with it and she puts up with it and she, you know, she continues to play along. And this kind of insanity needs to stop. Just a couple of weeks ago, I heard of a sister who, uh, you know, came, for, they, they married her in Pakistan. Like, they, they, they moved to Canada after the marriage, right? The guy came from Canada, he was a programmer, of course, what else is he going to be? So, you know, so they got married in Pakistan and they moved back and they're treating her like garbage, right? Like absolute garbage. She doesn't even eat at the same table with the rest of the household, right? And she's living with three other of his brothers. Her house is basically a room. She used to live large back in Lahore or whatever. You know, she was living in a big house, dad took care of her, and now she's living in a room. And going outside of that, she feels uncomfortable because his brothers are always around and he's always at work. And the mother-in-law treats her like garbage. And she couldn't take it one day because she actually ate something from what was supposed to be the mother-in-law's special meal or something. And the mother-in-law just starts yelling at her and tells her, you know, I wish you were dead. Why don't you eat these pills and just get, you know. And she said, you know what, I will. And she says, yeah, go ahead, please, relieve us. And she did, and she took all those pills. 
and you know they had to call 911 and you know social services or whatever version of it they have in Canada came in and they're the families now under investigation for you know this kind of psychological abuse and then they call the imam and say look these uh, are, are you know this girl I don't know how their parents raised her she went to the kuffar for help and I was like Allahu Akbar sister go to the kuffar for help what are you talking about <laughs> who's the kafir here for God's sake you people need to be in jail you know yeah